In today's world, we're often comparing brands and prices. Today, we look at the DGX670 from Yamaha and the FP30X from Roland. Two amazing manufacturers and two great price points, but really the differences lie in the feature set. Let's talk about it. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Ted, this is... Features. Features of instruments. And, I, and when we were looking at these two, I was really, I was eager to do it because it really kind of narrows down to what you think, because this is kind of a beginner price point, you know, it's not a cheap instrument by any means, but it's something that will get the job done for the majority of players. And it will be really hard for someone to say, okay, I need these features when they're usually in this price range. Yeah, the other thing that's interesting is that you think about comparing features and features, and that, that's kind of what people do when they go out, like buy a computer, buy a laptop, a phone, or something like that. And buying a keyboard, I guess customers ask about it, but I never think about feature to feature if, if they're just going to be learning music. And, and the, the feature sets are very different on these two models, and that's kind of why we chose these two. Um, and at first when they were released, there was a bigger price difference between the two. There was about a $50 price difference. Now there's only a $10 price difference. Yeah, they're real close. So both of them are in the 850 range, with the Yamaha DGX 670 coming in at 849 The FP30X from Roland is going to be 859 um, but really couldn't be dif more different, really, when, once you start looking at the two of them. Both of them, we'll just say right off the bat, are great instruments, can really get you a long way if you are a beginner, if you're someone who's more advanced looking for something portable, um, if you're looking to take something to college or an apartment. These are incredible instruments on, in their own right, um, but really kind of once you start looking at them, you can visually see a difference. Um, you, can you can feel a difference when you play them. You can hear a difference um, from the sound systems. Um, and so we'll, we'll just get right into it and, and basically talk about what you can expect from either of these. We have the DGX in front of us because it is a little bit more lively to look at. Um, immediately you see the LCD uh, screen on there, which was a huge upgrade from the previous model. And it's color too. It's a, yeah, so a, a color a color screen. The, the previous one was just kind of monochromatic, right? It, it was, was like that green or gray. Yeah, monochrome. Whatever. Yeah. And so it was, and it was a little bit more clunky. It wasn't as, as visually appealing. Um, they basically used the interface from their Clavinova lines and brought it all the way down into the DGX, which is incredible because this is a sub thousand dollar instrument, and you get a color screen on there. Really makes the navigation of this keyboard very easy. Um, one of the big things Yamaha is famous for is their style section. Right. And we're gonna we're gonna show in the demo. We'll show some of the style section being used. But what the style section basically does is makes you the player of a full band. A band. Correct. Yeah. And it has this accompaniment button right here, so that if you don't know how to play the bass parts, or you don't know how to pull out the the harmonics and stuff, that that's what kicks in the whole band. And, and it follows you. You're playing. So you know this has an arranger mentality to it. And so this this instrument is thought of as an arranger keyboard. But really, because it's 88 keys, they're weighted. Um, it really kind of complements just playing. And, uh, and uh, if you're a piano player, it's something that you can just take out and play, but also create with, record with. Um, and the style section is kind of the shining feature set of this, where it's, hey, I'm playing along with a whole band. There's you know, um, you know, a, rock, a rock song going on in the background, and I'm playing the melody. Or there's a pop ballad. Um, and it kind of goes through, uh, and we'll go through a couple of them. But yeah, when you're holding down the bass, like a C or an F, it's going to play in that key. Um, and you can really kind of start creating some really cool music from there. Um, and, uh, and so this style section is nothing. You can't find that on the FP30X. No, they don't have anything like that. Um, and, so, and so the screen and the style uh, section are really big benefits of the DGX. But then you go, let's look at the FP30 for a second. Um, the FP30, uh, I would say the action is a, is a better upgraded action. The keys feel better. The they do. The keys have the groove tops or the uh, satin or whatever it is. It's not the slippery, shiny It's glosses. like a matte finish on the, on the, uh, the keys. So, that, you know, it feels a little plasticky when you're on the Yamaha. Um, not the actual action, but the, 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 the physical texture. touch. Yeah. yeah, the texture on the top of the key tops. Um, but when you're looking at the FP30 when you're playing it, you get like, it's a, it feels a little bit more like 
a simulated ivory, which is what you know some very expensive pianos right. have on it. Um, and then it's called the PHA4 action that, that uh, Roland put in there. And I would just say it has a better feel. There's a triple sensor involved when you are playing it. So, um, you know, it's, it's calculating better velocity. More, yeah, more sensitivity for, for playing expression. And on the DGX, you only have a double sensor. So this is something that most beginners won't need. Right, um, right. But, uh, but it is something that, you know, the more variation of how you can play and, and different uh, sensor points um, can, you know, can really change the dynamic range of what's happening um, when you're playing it. Uh, and so, and so the feels are a little bit different. The FP30X also uh, has the supernatural sound from, uh, from Roland, uh, which is a really incredible sound that's been on their FP series for a while, but this really nice full 256 note polyphony sound system sounds incredible. And why it sounds incredible is to- It's got twice the oomph as this thing does. Yeah, two 11 watt speakers. Um, so on the DJX we're looking at here, these are six watts per side. So a total of 12 watts in your amplified power. Um, on the FP30X, you get 11 per channel. And they sunk the speakers into the unit, so the box kind of becomes a resonator as well. Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a more surround sound um, when you are in the room with it. It's not right just kind of going up. When you're sitting at the DGX, it's playing up, and it's a nice sound, and it's a stereo sound sample um, with their CFX sample. So it sounds incredible, but you're only getting six watts per side. You get a whole... 22 watts on uh, on the, the FP30X, so 11 per channel, which really kind of makes a difference when you kind of are sitting in front of it. Today we're going to be running the sound out of the back and, and listening to, you know, directly off of it. Well, that's the thing. The FP30, uh, the Roland one, has professional outputs. It's got the two mm -hmm. uh, separate left. This just has the... Um, the single output, which is a stereo jack, but it, it is, is a, a single. But 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 it is a. You have to change it inside if you don't want it to have the headphone power ramp to it. If you just want to line out, you have to designate it as a line out. Yes. As opposed to dedicated lines out. So so the connectivity is a huge difference between these two as well. Um, so you know, feature set internally, the the Yamaha is really kind of a, a complete. I would say bedroom. It's more like a music maker. Uh -huh. I, I look at the uh, the Roland product as a little bit uh, better, more superior in the piano end. And it has less sounds than this, mm -hmm. but it, it seems to be more dedicated to a pianist. Yeah. And um, not to take anything away from the DGX 670 that Yamaha, Yamaha put out, but it, this is a great feeling keyboard and it's got the CFX sound in it. Uh, sample, but it's not the latest, greatest bioral sample in it. Yeah. Uh, but it is a great piano sound. I thought the, all the sounds in here have been upgraded for this keyboard. And, mm -hmm. and I think in the original videos, I wanted one because I, I have a 660 that I wanted to replace with. But looking at that, some of the other things we have in the store, it's a tough decision to make. It is, it is. But what I like about uh, the 670 is, is that it gives a little bit more option to in terms of features that a customer would not have with the Roland product, and that is the multi-track recorder, and then also the, the ability, this whole thing is designed to try to make a song, to try to put some music together, even if it's just a solo piano thing. Uh, it's, it just lends itself to putting a string track, putting a bass track, and putting some multi-layers on it. And it is sort of set up for a little bit like portable church type use, because it does have, uh, a section where you can save your sounds in your settings. Yeah, memory uh, bank. For the memory bank. Mm -hmm. and, and also, um, the use of the style section is really, really big in a lot of the portability of this instrument because a lot of times people go places and they have certain kind of set songs and set standards to the styles that they like. And that part is kind of kind of nice. You can turn that on and play and, and get a song, a band sound out of it. Yeah, and, and we'll listen to that here in just a minute. Um, but like, I think to your point, like this is a very inviting musical experience. Um, and with the screen, uh, with uh, some of the style section, it, it kind of prepares you immediately to start playing. I told you my nephew had one of these and he was just under 10 years old when he got it and, and he loves it. And I told him there's tons of stuff you can learn how to do on it. It, 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 it reminds me a lot of some of the Clavinova products where they have the light up lights and it's, and it's of an inviting experience to learning music. Whereas I would say the FP30X um, is, is, hey, this is an established piano substitute for the go, um, for the stage. 
uh, lightweight, ready to go, great sample, but it's not as necessarily, a, like to your point, a creation machine. Right. Um, and so let's take a listen. We'll listen to the style section on the 670. We'll listen to all the samples that are going to be, uh, we're not going to go over all 600 voices that are in the, the 670, but we'll go over, you know, different sections of it. And then we'll listen to the, to the FB30X and listen to the piano sample um, and uh, some of the other sounds on that as well.
Well, Patrick, I noticed you did the demo on the 670. I didn't see where you had a microphone plugged in. You didn't do any vocals for us. So we didn't do any <laughs> vocal performing today. Um, you know, it's, it's a little hard to sing sometimes on the spot. Um, but we uh, did want to talk about the mic input that is on the DJX 670. That is such a cool feature. It really kind of completes the idea of, hey, this is a music creation machine. Um, and uh, not only can you plug a mic in, there are vocal effects that you can put on there. There are effects, um, I think there's over 500 effects that you can put on different voices in the DTX 670 um, that really kind of make it fun to, 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 you know, just makes it more lively um, and, uh, and kind of continues the, the, the endeavor of finding new music, creating new music, um, new sounds to play with. Well, what I was excited about uh, with the, uh, it started with the 660 is that from, you know, like the really big, really large, expensive CVP line that, that Yamaha has in their Clavinovas, that was the only digital piano that I knew of that allowed you to plug in a microphone and use the onboard sound system just as a practice piano mic uh, sound system. You can put in the headphones, hear yourself sing through a microphone mm -hmm. in headphones while you're playing, adjust the volume. And this was the first portable keyboard that took on a microphone other than the, the small 900 or 9,000, um, uh, was it the... PSR. PSR that mm -hmm. they had, that top of the line one. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I've noticed other manufacturers are now starting to put a microphone it, input into their portable keyboards. It, it makes it, it, makes it uh, inviting. Uh, I think you see it on uh, the FP90. Actually, it opens it up more for blending the voice with the music, and I think that's really important for mm -hmm. people to, to have some kind of pro mic piano setup that's going to emulate a lot of what they're going to find in a, in a live setting. Because a lot of times people that play and sing, you play and sing at home and you don't ever really get around to practicing on a microphone or how to use a microphone and play your instrument. It's kind of nice to have a setup so you can always keep your distance or find out when you got to go in and close. And so I'm, I'm thinking in the future we'll probably see more microphone uh, I would imagine one day there's going to be a small mixer s showing up on one of these keyboards where it's got like keyboard, microphone, and then maybe an alternative input from someone coming off the we, internet we, or something. We do see that. I think already on the FP90X there's a mic uh, slider for you for you to turn up and down. Um, something that the uh, that both these keyboards do have is Bluetooth audio, so you can connect your phone and play music out of the speakers. Right. What it, they both do not have, though, and I nod my hat to uh, the FP30X, they have Bluetooth, Bluetooth MIDI. MIDI. So Bluetooth MIDI is very convenient. I think all of us expect our smart devices to now just sync to your phone and your Wirelessly. Should, yeah, wirelessly. You should be able to control it. Um, some Yamaha products do have that. This is not one of them. Um, so you are not, there is no app on the outside that controls this unless you do it via with a uh, with an actual hard cable. Wire, yeah. So you can hardwire and control this with the piano. Uh, it's called Piano Smart Pianist. Smart Pianist. The Yamaha app Smart Pianist. Uh, Roland has a piano designer app. Um, and, and it's not, a, uh, I would say it's not like the best app ever, but the fact that it does connect as a Bluetooth MIDI means that you can use outside apps to that will, will, will uh, communicate with the device. So that kind of opens up the door to, to, to more uses with the FP30 if Bluetooth MIDI is something that's important to you um, or something that you can see getting value out of. Uh, so it's, it, to me, it's just, it's very interesting how different these two keyboards can be and how similar they can be for a player. You know, it's eight, they're about $850, 88 weighted keys. So with a great piano sample, what, you know, what could be the main differences? And then we yeah. start looking at it Intended use. We always end up saying that. Well, the choice comes down to whatever your intended use is. Well, I don't know what it is, but I want to know what they are before I buy them and how could one be beneficial to me in the future when I f figure I'll know how to play or whatever. So it, 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 that's if people are, are learning. They're great both learning keyboards. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one might be a little bit more preferred if you wanted to put your own songs together and make your own MIDI uh, multi-track uh, MIDI recordings or pull down MIDI recordings off the internet and just listen to them through the s sounds that are on the keyboard. Yeah, so it's, it's just, it's a, Yamaha makes a fantastic pro product, Roland makes a fantastic product, um, but we did want to kind of lay it out there that you know these two similarly priced, great 88 weighted keyboards are very different and it's kind of like trying to decide, you know, like when you get into biking, is it, are you going to get a mountain bike or are you going to get like a, you know, a road bike? Or a combo bike. Or a combo bike. And, and you know, it's like you, don't, you haven't started biking yet, but you kind of have a feeling of where you want to go in the future. And so we wanted to make this video to say, hey, 
you know, if you're looking music creation, you know, using different sounds, recording, uh, this might be more fun. If you're looking for a great piano substitute that you need to have an electric piano on, take it on stage, have uh, a left and right quarter inch outs, want to control it with your phone, bigger speaker maybe, the FP30X is a, is a home run when that when Oh, that's a, that. that's a live musician's instrument there too because mm -hmm. it's it weighs less than this one. Yeah, it's like 15, great point. 20 pounds different in the weight. Yeah, this 18. is this is 57 pounds, I think that's like 30 something pounds. Yeah, so so it's it's a big weight difference. So yeah, this isn't exactly pick it up and carry, but um, it is portable officially um, and uh, but the FP30 is much easier to Hey, if you want to make music, they're both going to work. The mm -hmm. Roland is more toward making music and the Yamaha is more toward producing music. In yeah. other words, like getting toward a, a full function song, especially, you know, the multiple sounds you have in the piano room. You can go in and open and close the lid on the instruments and, and change some of that stuff Very around versatile. as well too. Very versatile. So if you've owned one or both of these, or maybe previous generations of one or both of these, the 660, the 650, the 640, you know, it goes all the way back. The FP30 um, was before the FP30X, um, and FP series has been around for a long time. Uh, makes a fantastic instrument. If you own these, please leave some comments so that other people know. Did you enjoy owning them? Did you wish it had a certain feature set that now is added? Um, is it missing something that you think is a necessity? Maybe you think, hey, you know, you need a bigger system for this or the keys are need to be wooden. Um, what are things that you thought maybe were missing on these instruments? Because we can start a whole discussion on this. Um, but in the 850 range, both of these, I would say, are safe investments on you, on maybe someone you're buying this for, your kid, a student, a friend, incredible instruments. Um, and uh, we're just you know, happy to have them here today to play them for you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, thank you guys for watching and make sure you're subscribed to see more content like this where we're gonna be reviewing lots of fantastic instruments.